the More Movement Crew. Welcome to the More Movement Crew podcast. I'm your host, Kanina Porter, and this is episode six. Yes, we made it. We're at episode number six, Mm -hmm. and we are so excited. We have a special guest for you today, and we're going to talk a little bit about our special guest. But before we talk about our special guest, I want to invite you to subscribe. Click the button below so you can subscribe to our videos so you can get the latest videos every time we put them out every week. Okay. So don't forget to subscribe because we want you to be a subscriber and follow the more movement crew podcast, but welcome. Welcome. So, uh, our, before I introduce our special guest, okay. um, I want to quickly kind of give some, some background as to how the special guest and I, we, how we met. Mm-hmm. So Kenny hey. fresh, how you doing? Uh, is in the building today. Mm-hmm. And I met Kenny, um, we met in church. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that what kind of stood out between uh, between our, like how we kind of connected was music. If you think about it, we always yeah. talked about albums, yeah, music albums. For sure, for sure. And that is kind of how we connected. But um, through, you know, talking to you about um, music, talking to you about some of the things that we were doing in ministry, and mm-hmm. then um, recognizing you as a poet, um, mm-hmm. kind of helped us to, to connect. And of course I know your wife, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, that's kind of how we met. But, um, before we get started, we have a game that we like to play. So before okay. we talk about all the things that you're doing and mm-hmm. start digging in, mm-hmm. we're going to play a game. It's called five questions. Five you ready? Questions. I'm ready. All right. You ready? Ready? Mm-hmm. All right. So first question is mm-hmm. what is the most interesting place that you visited? <laughs> Probably Hawaii. Uh, that's where I was born. A lot of people don't know that. Um, I'm a Navy brat, so my parents, uh, my mom is from the Louisville area, my dad's from Texas, and they met in Hawaii, and a year later had me. Um, so I, I kind of lived that whole Navy brat life. So it's been Hawaii, California, Texas, Florida, some of those places multiple times, and then Indiana. So I, I had never seen snowfall until 2006 when we moved up here. So Wow, I'm yeah. a military brat too. I didn't know that. Yeah. I, that's crazy. Yeah. It's, because... I think that it gives us this, um, we're able to adapt. Facts. And we can talk to people. Like, yeah. I've, everyone laughs and says, like, I've never go anywhere and not meet a, uh, I never meet a stranger. Yeah. Because, like, I'm just used to talking to different types of people uh, because I've had to. Mm-hmm. So. That's exactly what, that's exactly how I feel. That's mm-hmm. awesome. I didn't know that about you. Yeah. See, I just learned something. See? Hey. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Question number two. Uh-huh. What gets you out of bed every day? <laughs> So, uh, this was a good question. I'm like, um, what gets me out of bed every day is probably business. It's just life. Life gets you. Um, I've thought about like, um, if you don't get up and handle your day, your day is going to wake you up and handle you. So that's kind of, um, what I, how I live. So that's kind of what gets me out of bed. Like, I don't have time to sleep in too late. I think the Bible also says, like, a little more slumber, a little more folding of the hands, and then poverty will be on you. So, like, rest is important, but, like, the the, the continual snooze button pushers, like, you got to get up. So, yeah. That's real, though. Yep, yep. Because sometimes I catch myself <laughs> hitting that snooze. <laughs> me too. Like, I'm like, ugh. Yeah. Sleep is a beautiful thing. It is. So yeah. I think per- if, if you don't have purpose getting you out of bed, mm-hmm. then yeah. you might just sleep all day. Sleep the whole day away. <laughs> Netflix the whole day away. I got, I got too many things to do, too much writing to do. Yeah, so, yeah. I feel that. Mm-hmm. Question number three. Mm-hmm. What color represents you? I thought about uh, blue. Is I think blue is what represents me because I think blue is kind of a chill, laid back um, thing. I think there's two colors actually. Blue blue and red because um, blue is real chill and then red is like kind of vibrant and it's out there and when you put the two together, like that gives me the, the colors for Spider-Man. So like, <laughs> I've always, you know, the whole poetry thing kind of feels, at, at one point it felt like a, a secret identity. I would like sneak off and do the poet thing and come back. So I think red and blue, but more so blue. I've always, always worn a lot of blue. I think Hawaii helps, so this, the ocean blue. I'm just, most of the time I'm a pretty chill person. So I think blue more so, but blue and red a little bit. And there is kind of a dichotomy there. So. Look at you. Yeah. That's a poet's explanation <laughs> for you, right? Sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go with that. All right, question number four. Mm-hmm. Now, this might be hard for you. For sure. Only because I know music is like, like you are a lover yeah. of music. <laughs> I've had multiple conversations with him about music yeah. as we dissect mm-hmm. 
things. Mm -hmm. um, so it's going to be hard. So mm -hmm. I might just say, so the question is, name three songs in your playlist. Mm -hmm. But that might be hard. So maybe yeah. if I say, name three artists. Yeah, three artists will work. Um, I, in my playlist right now, Toby and Wigwe is probably, he's top. I love everything Toby's doing. Um, and then uh, Chief, C H I. Uh, EF period. He's a lo-fi producer. I've been really listening to a lot of lo-fi, chill hop, jazz hop mm -hmm. stuff for the last few. And then um, this artist Go, uh, gifted on West East. He's a, a Asian American hip hop artist, and he's been dormant for the last since maybe 2014. But he's recently started playing music, so I'm legit excited. And I actually like tweet him. We talk every now and then, so I'm excited to see him continue to produce and drop new music. So. Those are the, my three. Yeah. Look, you had you had that that list ready. I feel like I feel like you were ready yeah, for that yeah. list. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, was it hard though? It was. It three? was. It was hard picking three. I was yeah. like, oh man, there's a lot. Like, yeah. Yeah. I feel like um, I don't know if you feel like this when you when you pick music. It's mm -hmm. whenever somebody asks you that question, it depends on like what space you're in. Fact, so when it's you all said, about the mood. So yeah. when you said chill hop, like I've been in the chill hop mood mm -hmm. forever because they got like the seasonal. Oh yeah. Edition. Yes. So like we get ready to come up on what? Fall. Fall is coming up. Yeah, probably probably September, October. And I just love it. Like, um I have been following I've been listening to Chill Hop records since maybe uh, December of twenty seventeen. So when they had the, the winter twenty seventeen, that was my first time because I think I read an article about the growing subgenre. And so I just love it. And they, they drop music almost every Monday. So like even last Monday on my birthday they dropped a, uh something by this artist named Junior State and it was called Nostalgic and it's just good music to yeah. write to to work to it really to. is just have it on the background so yeah for sure uh, that's pretty much one of the few genres of music that I can actually like study to mm -hmm. do work research yeah all that too so yeah chill hop if you have never heard of chill hop mm -hmm. you guys got to check it out check it out chillhoprecords.com they have like a uh, amazing playlists they have like two million subscribers on youtube like yeah, yeah they're really dope yeah mm -hmm. and i hope you get stuff done mm -hmm. help you get your life together so for sure check it out <laughs> yeah yeah check it out <laughs> all right so that was five questions mm -hmm. so now we get to get into the actual topic yeah. of the show so first i want you to start off uh -huh. um just introducing yourself introduce who you are mm -hmm. and then we'll go from there all right so I'm kenneth wood stage name kenny fresh I'm a writer, poet, performing artist, all those fun things, husband, dad, um, scientist of sorts, uh, anime nerd, comic book nerd. Like, so poetry is kind of the place where all these different sides of myself kind of get combined and you get, you get Kenny Fresh. So that's me. Ah, I didn't even know the scientist part. Yeah. Oh, Until yeah. I saw that spider. <laughs> Let's, yeah. let's talk about that spider since we're, <laughs> since we're already recording. Right. Her name is Joaquin. Oh, um, she has a name. Yeah, it was Joaquin. I thought it was a boy. Then I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a girl, but I don't feel like renaming. <laughs> well, it's hard to tell, but um, I, I've, I've had her for about five years now, and they can live up to like eight, 10, 15 years if you take a wow. care of them. And I, what she's talking about, I posted, she molts it so once a year, like she sheds her exoskeleton, and it looks like it's two spiders in there, but it's not. She And so it's really cool. And... She, I hadn't seen her do it in a year or two because she's getting older. Mm -hmm. So uh, she molted like probably Saturday, Sunday, sun, Saturday night, Sunday morning. Because I look at her, her, her cage every day, and I didn't see her. Typically, they flip over on their back, and then they kind of like just like come out. Mm -hmm. So definitely should YouTube. There's like tarantulas molting. It's really yeah, cool. yeah. Like you literally have all these comments under it about that. It was like, <laughs> oh my god. Look, how about this though? All the all all the women were revolted. But all the dudes said it was cool. cool. So, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you had some people, like, literally want to click off your page. Like. <laughs> I got it. Someone's like, you almost got blocked, bro. I'm like, look, I'll, I'll put a trigger warning next time. Because I, I need to put new photos up. Because since she's molted, her, her exoskeleton, the, the uh, one part looks really shiny and, mm -hmm. and brand new. Because she just molted. So, yeah. So, how does your wife uh, and daughter feel about uh, she got it Lucky. for me. She got it when I got when I got the lab job that I have. Mm -hmm. She got it for me in 2014, and then when it was time to get married and move in together, I, so I'm like, "Where's the spider going?" It's still alive. I'm like, "They can live up to 10 years." Daughter thinks it's cool. None of us have handled it because the store we got it from never handled it because just I don't think they had the insurance just in case it oh, bit okay. somebody and they're allergic. Okay. They're not poisonous, but if you get bitten, you could be allergic and just not know it. So wow. we've never had. So she's kind of just something cool to look at, mm -hmm. and um, you know, drop crickets in there every every few weeks and watch her eat. She goes from real slow to like pounce, real quick. So they're they're a lot faster than they look when they want to be. So wow, yeah. I'm just gonna say your wife is a real one. <laughs> yeah, she's a real one. Yeah, yeah. 
Let you have that spider. <laughs> I don't know about that. Yeah, I I didn't I thought I was gonna have to win her over for See, that. Yeah. yeah, but no, she got it for me when I got this job. I was oh, like, oh, it was a surprise. Yeah. She loves you. Yeah, yeah. She does. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so let's let's quickly talk about um kinda how you got started with poetry. Like how did you know it was it was something you wanted to do? How did you even, you know, start it? So fun fact, I hated writing growing up. Um like my mom would get uh, like e- not emails, but she would get like notes sent home saying Kenneth isn't writing enough. I mean, I'll fix that. I'll space the words further apart. So that was like fifth grade. Hated it. Um, I don't think I started writing it. I wrote my first poem in 2008. So of course, I was just talking to a, a videographer. He said every story starts with a woman. So this one, a woman broke my heart. She kind of played me, and I was sad. And for whatever reason, when I was sad, I just felt like writing a poem. I've never written a poem before. It was super cheesy. It was called layaway. Like, all the good guys get put on a layaway. And, uh, yeah. So you remember it? No, no. It's, oh, okay. it's been forever. And I've lost the notebook since then. You're talk, wow. you talking 10 years ago. <laughs> so, yeah. no. Nah, layaway. So that that's, that's pretty clever, though. That's what somebody else said. They're like, it was hard. I'm like, right. it, was, it was okay. It was, yeah. But it was definitely whiny. It was definitely, yeah. So, I did that. That was the first one. And then I would, I used to, I keep a journal. And then I would write journal entries. But then some days I would skip an entry and do a poem. And I think when I really knew this was something I wanted to do is when my grandfather died, I had my notebook with me. And I went to the wake and some words came to me like 45 minutes before his wake started. Mm-hmm. And I read them and it just really seemed like it impacted people. For whatever reason, I was getting my taxes done the next year and I did it for the lady who did my taxes. She was like in tears. And wow. someone was like, yo, and the other guy was like, you got a gift, man. And so I just like, all right, well, let me write and see what happens. And so I would post some stuff on Facebook. I connected with Lance in mm-hmm. 2011, and he just kind of connected me to this whole uh, poetry scene. And it's kind of been rolling since then. So first poem in 2008, been performing in the city of Louisville since 2011. You spent, you briefly mentioned that mm-hmm. you, that somebody told you it was a gift. Yeah. Like, did you, tr- did you believe that it was a gift? Yeah. I, I saw how it impacted people and I saw people uh, crying. I would throw something up on Facebook and somebody I didn't know, but like, hey, I saw your poem, man. It just really touched me, bro. I'm like, okay, I don't know you, but okay, I'm glad you like it. Mm-hmm. And so uh, then just finding out there's a whole poetry scene in Louisville, um, I just started going to different venues, different open mics, and I kind of rolled real tough with Lance because he, I think he's been curating stuff in Louisville for a while. So that was kind of how I, my entryway in. Mm-hmm. So what is it, uh, I guess, about just poetry and about like getting better and growing because I know you're Mm -hmm. always wanting to like master your craft Mm -hmm. yeah um what is it about poetry what is it that drives you to get better to to you know learn more uh because I don't want to be whack (laughs) to be real um my first ever like slam that I competed in was back when Jazzy Blue was open and we're, we're talking like 2013 and I'm excited I've got my three poems for three rounds and uh but people from like Flint came down because it was like maybe a three, four hundred dollar cash prize. I'm like, oh, I'm about to, yeah. And I was humbled really quickly. Um, the, like nobody, only one poet from Louisville made it to the second round. I was knocked out in the first. I was devastated. And um, I just, the guy who won, I, I stopped him like, hey man, what can I do to get better? Mm-hmm. He was like, always be a student. And so, and because I have like the whole, the whole, Christian poet label mm. like I can't I can't come I can't come whack with the you lines because people already you have gotta come harder yeah I do because people already have presuppositions it's like oh this is I've been introduced before this is the poet of God oh wow uh, you be in bars and clubs wow. like the poet for God and I'm like alright or this is the Lecrae of Louisville I'm like okay pause corny but, corny yeah so I I feel like it, it, it's definitely a good challenge and so whenever I whenever I spit People are like, wow, I wasn't expecting yeah, oh, man. Yeah. You said some good ish, man. I'm like, yeah, look, I try. <laughs> so to go that, just I can't come whack. And then also, I, um, for my motivation, I study a lot of battle rappers. Mm-hmm. So I mean, the the content aside, because it's pretty terrible. Mm-hmm. Um, the writing is so amazing. Like nobody's putting those kind of bars and that kind of thought in their songs. Yeah. So there's a, a real big parallel between. Po- uh, spoken word poetry slam poetry and battle rap so I watch battle raps how they project how they use their hands um, and I just want to come hard and so that was just kind of my whole thing like after I got whooped in that first slam I was like oh okay this, this is the whole world that I've just stepped into I want to get better I want to be able to hold my own I want like I just want to hold my own Yeah. I don't want to be like 
oh, this is the like you know the Apollo. This is the Christian God. Let's let's clap it up. No, yeah. you gonna you gonna like it because it's dope. You get a pity so, clap. Like, yeah, the pity oh, clap. You doing it for Jesus? Jesus. <laughs> let him use it. First of all, if they ever say let him use you, you're doing terrible. If they say it's all right, it's not all right. You gotta get better. <laughs> That's a word. That's a yeah, whole word. That's a whole word. Yeah. That's funny. So how word like when you said that they were your poem poems are horrible mm -hmm. what do you mean like were they just <laughs> so very simple they or? were super simple super rhyming because i thought poetry has to rhyme mm. it doesn't always have to rhyme now i rhyme when i feel like or if i feel like it's gone too long without a rhyme then I'll, I'll insert something in but like they just weren't there was no real like i was like real big on the whole one take jake oh, i've created something is awesome now I'm, I'm a fan of going back and editing if i have time to sometimes yeah. i don't have time um, but like, I want to go back, edit, I'll say it. Um, like I just didn't have a process. I just mm -hmm. kind of wrote it and it's done. Yeah. Uh, so now what I do is kind of like, I'll write it, I'll reread it. I'll do a voice memo on my phone. So I hear how it sounds. And then I'll start. What I do is when, if I need to memorize a piece, I will replay, I'll replay the voice memo. I relook at my notes that way. I'm kind of like visually and I'll, you know, uh, learning it all and um, that's kind of how I do it. I'm Ooh. very rigorous and uh, Just because I think it's super whack to be up here just reading from your Straight phone from the, People yeah. didn't pay money to come see me read that came that's to true. experience. Yeah, so um, my whole thing is like if I can learn everything I've learned about the Kardashians power all this stuff it was against my will. I didn't watch. I don't watch this stuff, mm -hmm. but I can tell you things. I'm like, if, if I can learn this stuff on accident, songs on accident, then I can have the discipline to learn my own stuff. Wow, that's so, real. I didn't have any discipline back then. It was just hold the notebook, yeah. shaking, and kind of. It's it's a it's a comfort and it's a safety net. And mm -hmm. so I want to. Only time you'll see me reading something if it, if it's brand new and it's at an open mic or if it's at an event and I just. They wanted a custom piece and I just didn't get it done in time. Mm -hmm. That's my fault. But I try very hard not to read. Yeah. It, um, I mean, for most people, if they would have experienced that where they just got, got got taken out like the first round, they may not have wanted to come back and try it again, you know? Yeah. They may be like, maybe this is not my thing. Right. Maybe I shouldn't do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, like, that, that's amazing that you, like, that made you stronger. It made you yeah, come back harder. Because I was, because I, I just felt the way. I'm like, yo, nobody from Louisville won. Nobody, only one woman made it to the second round and she was eliminated. So the third round looked like, it just looked like yeah. these people from Chicago came and took our money. It took over. It was <laughs> yeah, a takeover. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, oh, I definitely don't want to be on the bottom rung. And it, and it humbled me and it showed me where I was. And I'm like, yo, I need to level up. And so, mm -hmm. you know, playing RPG games, like, okay, I'm, I'm like a, a apprentice. I'm a beginner. Mm -hmm. I need to level up and become a warrior. So that's kind of, and I'm still like. People think I'm dope, but like last year was the first time I'd ever won a slam. Mm -hmm. So I won like three or four slams last year. But you're talking from 2011. Well, I did my first slam in 2013. So from 2013 to 2018, that's five years of never winning. Mm. Um, so it just kind of, I just wanted to get better each time. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I also realized that even with poetry, mm -hmm. it's not just the focus on like the words that you're saying but mm -hmm. it's how you say it facts yeah and so like i'm just a huge hip-hop mm -hmm. you know yep. person and so like you realize how they enunciate on certain words mm -hmm. and certain hand gestures and yep. facial expressions yep. how it like gives the poem power yeah yeah cadence, so cadence matters body language matters all that matters that's awesome so and also like you said something that made me think about it when you said that you were in school and like you hated writing mm -hmm. and then you said that you wrote that poem mm -hmm. and you think about how if like we're, we're a younger generation mm -hmm. if we start to connect them with that right mm -hmm. because young people love hip-hop they love rap music yeah. right but young people don't sometimes want to write they don't sometimes want to read yeah. but to be able to connect that together mm -hmm. i think that was is super powerful it is i mean uh, for those who like hip-hop Lance broke it down for me this way. Every every rap is a poem, but not every not every poem is a rap. Like poetry predates hip hop by like several centuries. There's poetry in the Bible. Um and so there's poetry poetry predates hip hop. So if you like if you like hip hop, you're a fan of poetry, you just don't know it. And so you can't be one of these the greats, one of the goats, you know what I'm saying, of, of hip hop and not write. Some of them say they don't write, maybe they don't but like if you want to get better you, you got to put pen to paper and you got to i mean they say the best writers are the best readers so reading and writing and i think that's why i'm so good mm -hmm. or, or starting to get that good is because 
while I wasn't writing, I loved reading. I, I used to read. Like, my mom would ground me from reading, like, for fun. Like, if I was doing something wrong in school, she'd ground me from reading. And I had someone in sixth grade who was like, oh, well, I need your mom. I'm like, no, they probably find something else you don't like but or you do like. And so because I had all these words, sometimes I'll be writing a poem and a word that I've never used will pop up to my head. And I have to Google it first, make sure I'm using it right. And then, I'm like, oh, this is right. So I'm just, I've got all these years of reading. And so that kind of helps come out with the writing. So, yeah, if you want to be a better writer, read more. Read more books. Facebook doesn't count as reading. Um, sometimes, but I mean, no most, no, most times it doesn't. Get off social networks, find you a book, read all the books, read whatever you're interested in. Like, I would check out the same four or five books about spiders mm. in elementary school because that's what I liked and they yeah. weren't getting any new ones. So I would just check them out, look at the pictures, learn stuff. And you right. know, there's certain words that I'm like, oh. I didn't know I knew that word, and it's, I'm using it in the right context. That's what I tell students all the time, though. You know, even if you're not, find something that you're interested in, mm -hmm. and you'll definitely want to read about it. Like, yeah. we had, um, I worked at an organization, and we had some young people that we were trying to get to read, mm -hmm. and one of the teachers went and got the Gucci Man book. <laughs> yeah. And that book, and was like, hey, you, they'll read this, and, it was, right. and they read it. Yeah. Because they was like, he wrote that, and so they, they were interested in it, so they wrote it. Yeah. I mean, they read it, so. There, there's a book about every subject. Whatever you're interested in, there's probably a book on it, and if there's not a book, maybe you should write one. Right. Mm -hmm. It's possible. Mm -hmm. It's definitely possible. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about uh, where you want to go hmm. right let's talk about what do you see mm -hmm. what does kenny fresh see himself doing like in the future what do you feel like you're, you're headed um where do i see myself that's a good question because I, I typically take it day by day but the goal is you know have merch because this is the, the problem my biggest problem is everybody a lot of people can agree i'm dope they're like this is great it's a great experience but i need to leave them with something something tangible in their hands so the goal is to have merch. Um, I would really like to approach poetry almost like um, like music because you can win Grammys for spoken word. Mm. Most people that win are like authors reading audio books. Mm. But I would love to just, you know, really focus on maybe coming out with a spoken word album, having shirts, buttons, all that kind of stuff, and just traveling and touring. Um, I would love to go do colleges because colleges have the budget for entertainment. Mm. I think one of the biggest things as an indie artist is just finding people who have the budget. Um, and I have to turn down people because it's like at the point I'm at the level of skill the time that I've invested Like I can't do everything for free. Mm -hmm. Like I got bills yeah. So and I can't do it for free because it's for the kingdom. No, I can't No, Jesus You know what I'm saying the Bible said pay a worker his wages So mm -hmm. if you think I'm good put your money where your mouth is right. So right. the goal is just kind of um, CDs touring merch um, I would love to do like a commercial because I, I think last year I think there was a poet who did something for Macy's for I think Black History Month it might have been last February um, there's there's a whole space I would love to um, maybe even I don't even know how it would work but I would love to like I said commercials maybe even um, something for a movie like spoken words been used in movies I would love to be featured on other people's albums mm -hmm. like you know um, Rap City just dropped. Out I was just Eve. getting ready to say that. I yeah. just listened to it, and there was there was there was a spoken word poet on. I'm only four or five tracks in, but like the first couple, yeah. there was poetry on there. She's a dope poet, though. Yeah, I really like her her work. What's her Renee name? Renee Biddy. I haven't seen. I, I think it's Renee. It R E Y N A. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's she's really dope. So I have to say, I, know yeah. I gotta check her. I gotta yeah, look that good. up. But so poetry is making more and more strides, and I just kind of wanna. I just want to be kind of at the forefront. And so if it leads to full-time, because I think people make being an artist full-time sexy, and it's, it's a lot of work. Right. And there's no, there's no benefit. So I would need to keep my job until poetry started paying me almost as much as my job before I make that leap. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, I've flirted with the idea of, of going full-time, you know, mm -hmm. quit cash in the 401k and, like, try to make a good go of, out of it for a solid year. But it's just, just not time. Man. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. you got a family. Yeah, yeah, got <laughs> to yeah. consider. It's yeah. not just you anymore. So yeah, man. If you you're gotta. if you're a bachelor, you should try doing your craft full time for a year, see if you like it. But when you've got responsibilities, you got to got to be smart. Like I, there's an artist I like, Ruslan. He, I think he paid down all his debt and then he saved up six months, um, six months of uh, expenses before he went full time, mm -hmm. and he's been doing it full time for four years. So that's the kind of preparation. Everybody just makes it seem like quit your job and do it. No, be smart. Mm -hmm. Because bills is real. They That's real. They don't take exposure. Right. 
It, mm. Especially when folks is asking you to do freebies. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. of I course. Could, I could do more freebies if more people paid me. Like, if somebody gave me something for a few stacks, like, mm-hmm. I could say yes to some of the other stuff. Mm-hmm. But, like, nah. And that is the thing, though. Like, mm-hmm. let's stay on this whole asking people to do stuff for free. Let's talk about let's this. Let's talk about because it. Because you always, people always either want to get a discount. Mm-hmm. They want you to come do them a favor and do something for free. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you want to be paid, right? Yeah. So why can't you pay me? Right, right. You know, and you know I'm blessed. Um, the church that we go to, everybody that's approached me asks me how much I charge first. Mm-hmm. Like, they lead with that. That's very rare. Most very people, rare. especially in the church, the church is, has the stigma of, like, not paying folks. But I think we're in a new day where people realize everything costs. Mm-hmm. So I've been blessed. I haven't really, no one's really asked me to do anything for free. Um, if anything, when some people are like, I just don't have it. I don't, I can't afford you right now. I'm like, okay, well, I'll be here. But, um, yeah, for the most part, I think in the, everybody goes to that in the very beginning. Mm-hmm. Like, I definitely in the beginning had people, oh, can you come to my church? Sure. And at the time, when you're in the beginning, you say yes to everything. Yeah. And then when you build up your name, your skill, your reputation, then you can start to charge what you're worth. So, yeah. That's definitely real, though. Mm-hmm. I've had people be like, hey, give me a free book. Give me some free books. Like, <laughs> Oh, no. You can, I can give, give you a free t-shirt. I can give you a discount if you buy 100 of them. All right. We'll knock out 20, 40 off the price. How about that? Right. But you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not planning on doing any um, <laughs> buy one, get one free sales. You might get like 10, 15% off if you, you know what I'm saying? Right. You refer me. Uh, you know, something yeah. like that. So, yeah, that makes sense. Give incentives for people who believe, but... Like, just to, off the cuff, mm-hmm. like, there's very few things. Like, in in this business, you will do some stuff for free for favors. Like, if it's a big-time artist, like, and if, if it's somebody you believe in, do it for free because that could turn into a working relationship and eventually money will come down yeah. the line. But I think I don't think that's what most people are doing. I think most people just want the free hand. Oh, we need, we need you to do some poetry for the kids. Can you come? Okay, what's your budget? Like, that's what I lead with now. What is your budget? Mm-hmm. Like, because I have my rate, but, like, I work with budgets. But if you don't come with a budget... I don't really know what to do. And then there's yeah. an exchange. Like, I've done stuff for free for a big church because I got a high-quality video out of it. Mm-hmm. Videos cost thousands of dollars, so the exchange was free. It was yeah. was equal to me. So, like, yeah. I'll do some stuff for free if you ask, but, like, don't assume. Like, right. just, just ask. Be up front. If, if, whatever it is, if you want something like, I can't afford your full rate, maybe I'll take half or... I, we really don't have it, but we'd love for you. We, there's, you know what I'm saying? There's, there's ways room. to negotiate. There's, there's ways to negotiate. There's leverage. It. Yeah, there's, there's leverage. leverage. Yeah, yeah sure. I definitely get that. That's some good tips, though, because mm-hmm. I'm sure that there's plenty of people who get asked to do stuff for free. Yeah, because the, yeah. whole, the whole starving artist thing is, like, false. You can eat off your art, um, but you have, to, you have to say no a lot. Mm-hmm. And then once people see the worth then you know it'll start coming but you gotta it's a lot of no's it's a lot of mm, i can't do it or uh, maybe i'll take a, a little bit off the price but yeah that's like the hardest part is is the rates even discussing with other artists it's like it's kind of that's like the hardest part is yeah. charging or finding out what's fair yeah because so. it's like you're putting a price on something that's super super important to you mm-hmm. right just yeah. like regular art yeah like your wife we've i've had plenty of conversations with her where she schools me mm-hmm. literally schools me on the business of being an artist yeah and there is a business like yeah. if, if you don't want to deal with the business part just do it as a hobby but if you think that this is what your purpose to do or what you're skilled and talented at like find a way to charge and i i know my rates are not like that high so i've made them kind of accessible on purpose mm-hmm. but when you know like uh videographer roman lane he just won an emmy you know what i'm saying so his prices have been going up steadily but he said he hasn't even raised the price for the emmy yet so when when i hit these milestones like and the price starts going up like you know what i'm saying don't be surprised <laughs> like <laughs> that happens inflation you know what i'm saying the price goes up so you said something also about purpose let's mm-hmm. talk about that mm. let's talk about how like what do you feel how do you feel poetry kind of aligns with your purpose like what do you think it like your purpose is that's a great question i feel like i wish i was like chrysalis and got like the whole purpose fed to me <laughs> but um for me i just knew that i wanted to encourage people and I knew that it's a gift. So I, I know I need to use it to help people. I know it's going to bring me before a great people. But I didn't really know what the whole purpose was until maybe, you know, and, and my wife would be like, people look kind of look at me as like a beacon of, of hope and light. And I've seen go, me go into situations and, and places and people leave encouraged. So that's cool. But I think one of the things that uh, that God wants me to focus on is I was praying last year and he was like, you know, I want you to speak to people's pain. 
So um, that's kind of, you know, it can get deep and heavy. And I realized some of the poems, I was already doing that without knowing. And so some of my most popular and well-received poems have dealt with that. Like I've got a poem, DNA, this daddy needs to answer deals with father, fatherlessness. My dad was always in my life, but I've seen people who didn't. I wrote about that. And I've had people tell me like, even though like I lost at a slam, I used it as someone's like that first poem you did really touched me. Um, and then my most popular one now recently is how are you really? Cause it's dealing with mental health. So, yeah. you know, just asking how are, you know, how are you really? And, um, so it kind of speaks to the pain and mental health. So, um, the goal is, I think just speak to people's pain. Every piece might not be that. Um, but I think that's kind of what I've been focusing on because mm-hmm. there's like, we were talking before, you know, we were recording, like some of the stuff, some, when you go to some of these poetry events, like it, you can leave depressed, even more depressed. And I've heard people who've been doing slam for 20 years complain about it. So or angry. Yeah. Or angry. Mm-hmm. I mean, those are real emotions, mm-hmm. but like, you know, I want to try to uplift. So, uh, speak to pain, but still somehow like inject hope and light and love into it and faith because yeah. that's really what, what you have at the end of the day. I think also just listening to your poetry, mm-hmm. um, it always leaves you with questions, mm-hmm. right? With mm-hmm. a question mm-hmm. or invoking a thought. Yeah, yeah. And so I find that that also kind of helps people to like really mm-hmm. th- think about. Yeah, I definitely know. want people to think. I don't want you to just come sit and be entertained. That's a part of it. Uh, you know, what I do is kind of like entertainment, but I really... I put so much thought into these pieces because it's like I want people to really think about their lives, think about what they're doing, think about their, like I have a poem called Meticulous where I just really want people to think about the words they use. And I hope I hope that when people leave, that they leave with a thought, they leave encouraged uh, and, and, you know, leave entertained. Like there, it's possible to do all of those. And so that's kind of like the high standard I set for myself. And then not to be like, just randomly sprinkling Jesus or like, I, I got to hit my Jesus quota. There's whole poems where you might not hear Jesus, mm-hmm. but I think if you are around me enough, you'll realize that I'm a Christian and I don't have to put like Jesus in that obligation. Every, just about every poem deals with some sort of biblical concept or there's some scripture sprinkled in there somewhere, but I'm not going to just like Bible thump you to death. Cause there's, there's poets that do that. And I'm like, if I wanted a sermon, I would just turn on one. <laughs> you need to be, I want people to be creative right. uh, with the delivery. Right. Don't just like, you can't just force feed people like scripture and make it rhyme. That's not, there's a market for that. Mm-hmm. It's not what I do, but there's right. a market for that. You know? And I think that once they listen to you, they'll, they'll be able to get that message and they'll mm-hmm. be able to understand it without you having to be like, Jesus saves <laughs> he died for you like we we know that right yeah. we know that and I, I put that in a poem about beauty because like you know i have to like bay the bay of poem is like you know i i, I said that you know that I've, I've put in the gospel because people need to know that beauty doesn't just come from within it it came from above mm-hmm. so there's points where like i'll definitely lead that way but just as i see fit or if i feel like i need to yeah. Yeah. I'm as you feel led. Yeah. As I feel led. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I definitely, that's the big part of it. I, I'm sometimes I just write if I'm like, I make the best stuff when I'm mad, when I'm angry. But, uh, <laughs> I also, I try to pray before I write every poem. Mm-hmm. So that's a big part of it. I think the scripture that I kind of meditate on is Psalm 19, 14 is like, let the, um, words in my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. So, uh, I know that I'm be held accountable for how I use the gift. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Yeah. That's really good advice, though. Mm-hmm. Just accountability for the gifts that you're given. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people don't recognize that. They think the yeah. gift is to bring them glory, right. to bring them financial right. prosperity yeah. or fame. Mm-hmm. That's a part of it. I like uh, when, with the whole fame part. I don't know if I'm like, I've been on TV. I've been, you know, sort those sorts of things. And I, I think I put on Instagram, like, like I've opened up for the mayor and stuff. Like, it really doesn't matter. So, uh, but, but uh, I think Stephen Furtick was interviewing uh, Bishop T.D. Jakes and, you know, Bishop said, he like, I didn't ask to be famous. I prayed to be effective, mm-hmm. but the fame came as a part of being effective. Like if you're really good at something, people are going to find out about you. So like my advice is just like, don't worry about the likes, clicks, views. That'll come if you want, stay with it. I've been doing this for 10, 11 years now. People still don't know who I am in the city of Louisville. So I know I got work to do. So stay with it. And just get better. Yeah. And if you if you do those long enough, like I've had people like, oh, I saw you perform over a year ago, and it was dope, and they still remember. I'm like, you remember what I did like two years ago? That's amazing. That's, yeah. I'm leaving an impact and impression, and eventually, wherever I'm supposed to go, like, God and the gift will get me there. Yeah. Yeah. That's really really good advice. Mm-hmm. That's dope. So I'm gonna ask mm-hmm. if mm-hmm. What's up? you have a 
a piece <laughs> okay that you might want to mm -hmm. share with us okay before we close all right so what one because i've mentioned several which one would do you want to hear that I've, I've, I've mentioned meticulous i mentioned bea dna um how are you really which of those four you want to hear let's do dna okay sure yeah, I wrote that one like in 2012 because I've, I've got lots of young kids around me and I would see the way they would look at me when I would be out and I'm like, okay, they, you know, daddy needs to answer. Fathers, absentee fathers, you're going to have to answer to your child and you're going to have to answer to God about why you weren't on your job. Um, so here we go. Deoxy, ribonucleic acid, commonly referred to as DNA. Hereditary material passed down from parent to child strands of genetic coding wired through nearly every cell of the body. So while for most of the world, that's what DNA stands for. Those three letters, D and A, have a whole different meaning because daddy needs to answer. Questions like, who are you? Why did you leave? And what kept you away from me? I know that opposites attract causing you and mommy to react, but I also know that like poles repel. Is that why you stay away? Am I so similar to you that the only option you had was to head in the opposite direction? I'm learning in school that for every action there was an equal and opposite reaction. So daddy, you collided with mommy and I was born, causing you to react in the way you did. Is that what happened? You see, daddy needs to answer. I've got so many inquiries, but you don't necessarily address them. You didn't need to appear. The absence, the silence, the void in my life is akin to the deafening roar of the ocean in my ears. And speaking of oceans. You can't begin to count the number or measure the depth of the sea of tears that I have cried. See, daddy needs to answer. I'm curious as to why mommy won't let me see you. She treats it like a game and I don't know if it's checkers or chess or if you're even playing. I'm new to chess, but I want to know why mommy uses me as a pawn against you if the king and queen are on the same team. I feel like I'm being held hostage and can only lay eyes on you in my dreams. See, daddy needs to answer. The question of children all across the globe, cries that come deep from the soul. Every child needs their dad. No matter how well the intentional mother can feel both lanes, see children deserve to know both contributors to the blood and their veins. See parents are the amino acids used to build up the DNA in their seeds without both parents. That double helix begins to unravel. Their sense of significance and being wrapped up in knowing who they are and whose they are. There is the absence of a man in a child's life as the fathers are on strike. And I don't know if they didn't think it through. Thought a family was too much to hold on to. Walking off the job before the benefits could kick in. If these eyes are truly to windows to the soul, then how many children are hiring? Help wanted signs tattooed on the hearts of many. They're so desperate for love. They'll take almost anyone. Hire the first man on the fly. If these eyes could truly speak, they would probably say, Father wanted. Dad need apply. Thank you. That's it. All right. There we go. That was Kenny Fresh. He killed it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I like that one. I always like that poem. Um, I think you did that one. I'm trying to remember the last time you did that one. It was, it was, it's been a minute, but I yeah. really, really like that poem. Thank you. So shout out to you. Thank you. Thank you for that. And I always yeah. leave um, the show mm -hmm. asking one question. Mm -hmm. When did you know that there was more? Okay. Do you want some context around the around the question? Yeah, sure. So basically, um, when you I ask that question because there's always a critical moment mm -hmm. with people, whether, mm -hmm. whether they decide to go on and pursue their dreams or to get out of a situation, but there's that, that moment mm -hmm. where they said, okay, there's more to this. Mm -hmm. when, when was that moment for you? Uh, I think I mentioned it earlier, is when I did the poem for my grandfather. And okay. the, you know the words came 45 minutes before and I never had a poem come that quick. It was almost like I didn't even write it. Um, the poem was called Fly Away, and um, that, and then when I did it for the, the lady who was doing my taxes, and she cried, and the guy said it was a gift, it's kind of like, almost like my whole origin story, <laughs> if I was a superhero, that's kind of when I knew that there was more, that there's more to do with this, so, yeah. Right. Well, thank you so mm -hmm. much for coming on the show. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for sharing your poem, mm -hmm. and so you. I want you to let people know mm -hmm. how they can connect with you. All right, cool. So, I am on... Not all the social media, but I'm on social media. I'm on Facebook. You can find my uh, artist page is Kenny Fresh slash Refresher Point, or just type in at Refresher Point, and I should pop up. Um, Instagram and Twitter is both Kenny Fresh one zero two five. That's K E N N Y F R E S H one zero two five. And then my website is refresherpoint.com. So refresh e r p o i n t dot com. That's where you can book me at. And yeah.
Make sure you check Kenny Fresh out. Mm -hmm. uh, like, follow him, mm -hmm. and don't forget mm -hmm. to subscribe to this podcast subscribe. so below. that you can stay up on what we do next. All mm -hmm. right. Thank you for checking us out. Be blessed.